As most of you know by now, I love what I do. Cleaning, restoring, and detailing cars is clearly my passion. But I have to admit, I have an addiction. Anyone who's driven on the track knows how easy you can become hooked on high-performance driver education days. However, I want to be clear. This isn't a video about how to become a race car driver. That's not going to be accomplished in a 15-minute video, or even 15 years for most. This is simply a step-by-step -step guide to encourage, motivate, and to take a peek behind the curtain of our track day addiction. So you've decided to take the plunge into high-performance driver education, but how much does it cost what tracks are available and how do you sign up? Well, we're gonna find out today from Spencer Cox of Speed Sport Tuning. The first time I went to a track day, it was terrifying. Sort of like going to your first day of school. You don't know where to go or what time to be there and you're sort of staying away from all the seniors. But I'm hoping by the end of this video, we're sort of pave the pathway, sort of encourage you to come out and join us at DE events. So let's go talk to Spencer Cox. So Spencer, as the chief instructor for Connecticut Valley PCA, what are some things that you need to think about if you're a beginner and you're like, you're excited, you want to go to the track, what's, what's the next step that you would take? Well, most of the people want to find out what is available in their region, you know, in the United States. Uh, two of the best places to find events are uh, clubreg.net and also motorsportreg.net. And what you can do is you can look on those, uh, on those websites and find out, like here in, in uh, we're in Connecticut, obviously, we have uh, Lime Rock, Watkins Glen, New Jersey Motorsports Park, they just opened Palmer, so there's New Hampshire, there's all these events and you could find out what events are there. So let's say if a Porsche Club event is there, you know, you'd sign up if you have a sure. Porsche. There's Audi Quattro Club, there's BMW uh, Owners Club, there's uh, Boots and Bonnets for a Jaguar, I mean pretty much anything you want. SCDA is uh, a great event for beginners to get involved and then you go through run groups as you advance and, uh, and you work with them. I sort of thought of it as karate, you know what I mean? You got yeah, like the, the belts, the belts that exactly. you go all the way up, so that, that kind of works. Now, tell me a little bit about insurance. From what I've heard, insurance stops as soon as you get on the track. Your regular personal insurance, is that yeah. true? Yeah, many years ago, you could get, uh, you know, uh, one of the big uh, insurance companies, they would cover you. But once they found Blue Armco from Watkins Glen <laughs> on it, they, they started figuring out where, where the Blue Armco was sure. and the marks, and uh, they stopped, and there's uh uh, a couple good places, but uh, the problem is in, in our world at the racetrack, it's not if, it's when. And, you know, you don't have to be driving over your head to make a mistake. If a guy in front of you drops two gallons of antifreeze, it's a bad day, and your insurance company says you're not covered on track, what do you do? Personal car insurance does not cover physical damage on the track. Meaning, if you crash at the track, you will be out of pocket for all the repairs or even a total loss. There are several companies that offer track insurance, but I use ontrackinsurance.com because they have an agreed value and no depreciation if the unfortunate should happen. By signing up for clubregistration.net, you'll have access to thousands of driving events and it's free. First, create an account, then fill out your personal profile and vehicle information. Next, search for your favorite track or buy your local club. Sign up for an event and look for a confirmation email from the specific track chair. Click the link for your tech sheet and print it out. Then go to an approved technical inspection location, which can be found on your club's website or email the track chair for help. This inspection must be completed before you arrive at the track, but no more than two weeks prior to the event. The first and most obvious way to minimize the potential for an accident is to ensure your vehicle is in proper working order. To do this, Spencer lifts the car and removes the wheels to inspect the brake pad depth, condition of the rotors, tire wear, wheel bearings, oil leakage, suspension, and exhaust to name a few. With everything checking out, Spencer signs and stamps my tech sheet I'll need tomorrow at the track. Now that the mechanical aspects of my car are ready for track duty, it's time to head home and prepare my wheels and paint for tomorrow's battle. Then I'll pack the car tonight with all the gear I'll need for the track tomorrow. When going to the track, you can expect to get rock chips or peppering like you see here. Now, if your car is brand new, I would suggest a clear bra. Now, if that's something you don't want to do, a lot of guys actually use uh, tape like this here. Either way, I can assure you, you're going to get rock chips. Now let's go over the steps I use to get my car ready to go to the track. First, I clean the rims and calipers with my lug nut brush and wheel woolly to ensure the wheel jelly can adhere to the rim. With your gloves on, 
spread the jelly into your palm and spread evenly between both hands. Next, work the protectant into every corner of the rim and allow it to dry for two minutes. Then remove it with a clean microfiber towel. This will help clean and protect the wheel from the intense brake dust it will see at the track. Next, wash or rinse the paint to ensure a clean surface and then apply a strong paint sealant. This will help you remove rubber marks from the track and allow the water to sheet off the paint if you happen to be on a wet track. Finally, thoroughly clean the outside and the inside of your windshield. I like to put on a hydrophobic product like rain -X on the windshield just in case it rains. It's extremely helpful when out speed on a rainy day. Now that the car is protected, here's what I use to protect the driver. My friends and I shop online at websites devoted specifically to racing safety equipment. Places like StableEnergies.com, TeamDI.com, WineCountryMotorsports.com, and ApexPerformance.net are just a few of the most popular websites to find your gear. In addition to my helmet and Hans device, I always bring driving gloves, driving shoes, and a fire suit based on the track conditions and the type of event. I also bring an extra shirt, pair of socks, rain jacket, sunscreen, sunglasses, and of course, don't forget your driver's license. At most events, long sleeve shirts and long pants like jeans are mandatory, so dress accordingly. Next, I bring a tarp to protect my gear in case of rain or a muddy paddock, and a large bag to hold all of my loose items that need to be removed from the car at the track, and of course, a folding chair to relax between sessions. In terms of tools, I strongly recommend you bring what you need to be self-sufficient, but someone is always ready to help if a particular tool is needed and you don't have it. A torque wrench and a tire pressure gauge should be number one on your list. You will most likely use these before and after most sessions. Every car will burn a good amount of oil at the track, especially air-cooled 911s like mine, so I bring at least three quarts of total oil with me. Remember, you have to drive to the track, drive at the track, and then drive home. So that's a full day's work for your engine, so make sure it's lubricated. Next, I bring a few window towels and a long handle razor blade to clean the bugs and rubber off my windshield before each session. Lastly, bring a big cooler of lunch, snacks, and plenty of water. Once the car is packed and ready to go, I get to bed early and watch a few YouTube videos of drivers at the same track I'll be at in the morning, especially if I've never been there before. Upon entering the gates of any track, you will need to sign a track waiver and receive one of two wristbands. Upon entering the paddock, find a suitable parking space near the bathrooms if possible. An unwritten rule of track etiquette is to allow enough space to the car next to you so that each car can have its doors wide open without fear of hitting the other's door. This will help you get in and out of the car with a helmet on and allow you space to work on your car should you need it. Next, sign in at registration and get your next wristband and find out who your instructor is going to be. At that time, you should also receive a schedule that lists your staging and on-track times as well as classroom training. Immediately after registration, unpack your car so that absolutely no loose items are in the car, including easy passes, garage openers, air fresheners, pens, you get the idea. Then, drive your car to the tech line with your previously filled out tech sheet and your helmet for an inspection. Most inspectors will check your brake pad depth, lug nut torque, helmet certificate, and for loose items in the trunk, under seats, and if loose floor mats have been removed. Once approved, they will issue you a window sticker indicating your car is ready for the track. Before every event, the track chair holds a morning driver's meeting that is mandatory and very helpful. He will discuss the current track conditions and remind everyone of the passing rules and the passing locations, as well as review what each flag represents. Red flags indicate there is a serious problem on the track and your session will end. Come to a controlled stop while in sight of a flagger. Black flag is a signal to pull into the pits. Something is either wrong with your car or there's an accident on track. Standing yellow flags means you should slow down but not come to a complete stop. Proceed with caution. Yellow with red stripes indicates a slippery or dangerous track surface ahead. Blue with yellow stripe means the flagger recognizes that a faster car is behind you. You should let them pass safely. The checkered flag means the session has come to an end. 
I encourage you to read your club's driver education guide, which will help you understand the significance of each flag and how hand signals are used on the track. Once you're on the track, your instructor's number one goal is to help keep you and your fellow driver safe as you become more familiar with the track and of course your car. His second goal is to educate you on where your vehicle should be at different areas of the track. This is called driving the line or the fastest way around the track. This will not be learned in one day, so don't beat yourself up. Listen to your instructor, be safe, and have fun. Once you pit in from your session, I highly encourage you to get your tire pressures while the rubber is still hot and write them down in your track journal. After several events, you will establish a baseline for how much your particular tires react to outside temps, track conditions, and speed. As you progress in understanding how your car feels at speed, adjusting tire pressure will become vital to your car's control or grip. Tire pressures are very important on, a, on any kind of track car because you want the maximum grip for that tire. So if you have too little pressure, the tire will basically diaphragm in and out of the rim and you won't have maximum grip. And conversely, if there's too much pressure, the tire will balloon and you'll only be sitting on the center. So it's very critical and to get the tire pressures optimum for that brand of tire, for the rim width and for the weight of your car. But why do we do it immediately after the track? Well, because what we try to do is we try to grow the tire pressure in when the, you step on the brakes, the brakes get hot, the rim gets hot, and it heats the air in the tire, which can grow anywhere from five to 10 pounds. A lot of people like to use nitrogen because although it grows typically nine pounds on a race car, at least I can count on that. Whereas if you get the air from uh, some compressor on the side of the road, you never know if it has a lot of water in it, which will expand at a much higher rate. There's winter tires and there's summer tires, and then on your race car, you have full slicks. Like, wh where are we with this? Well, a slick tire, uh, is uh, made by a bunch of different manufacturers. They have no tread on them whatsoever and the softest rubber you can possibly get. And the truth is, is they wouldn't make 500 miles on the street if I were to drive them home. Because they're, they're super soft. sticky. Soft, yeah, soft, soft okay. and sticky, exactly. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't have trucks and trailers and they like to drive their car to and from the track. Now, regular street tires are very hard. The manufacturer tries to get, let's say, 40 to 80,000 miles that they promise you on that tire. So it's a very hard tire, not a lot of grip. Whereas um, Toyo makes an amazing intermediate tire that you can drive to and from the track, yet has amazing grip for, for DE days. And as you will, you're going to drive this home tonight, drive for the next couple weeks to your next event. That's right. Having an instructor sit right seat with you on the track is wildly helpful, especially when you're new to these type of events. They have special microphone communicators that allow you to speak to each other despite the intense exhaust note. What's even cooler is Spencer could feel where my car needed some adjustment in its setup based on my driving inputs and of course the car's response to them. In this case, Spencer stiffened the rear JRZ canisters to help promote oversteer, or in other words, reduce my C4's understeer, which was significantly improved on my following session. The car shouldn't bounce as much when you're going around like the uphill, yeah. but you feel a little more planted in the rear, so you're not gonna get to the top. It's gonna be stiff to put more weight on the front tire to get better turn. You mean when we make that light? Yeah, when you go up, shouldn't be. So what you're doing is you're turning wheel and accelerating which makes, wow. which makes the front light and then it just washes off so you have to patience turn unwind and accelerate as you unwind but because it's not doing what you want you're getting frustrated and you're giving more gas but it's not helping the situation you're just washing out rather than point and squirt after your last session of the day allow your car to cool down while you pack your belongings and fill your car back up for the trip home remember to put your wallet Easy Pass and garage opener back in their respective place within your car. For some reason, 
I always forget to do this and have to pull over on the side of the highway to find it in my bags before the first toll booth, which makes me crazy. Lastly, before you leave the track for the day, it's always a good idea to replace the air in your tires if you drop the pressures earlier in the day. Check your journal for how many pounds you may have removed and simply add them back in before you drive home so that your tires are back to the manufacturer's recommended pressures for normal daily street driving. After many events, I've come to learn that performance driving is an art that takes a lot of seat time to perfect, and those who have the experience are always willing to impart knowledge. DE days are not just about the track, nor just about the classroom. It's about combining both areas of driver education towards the art of car control. Speed, however, comes many years later. All right, guys, well, I'm all set with the track day, and I had so much fun. Now, this video is a glimpse, a behind-the-scenes look of all the things that you typically go through on a driver education day. Now, download my free PDF on the website, get insurance tools, all the things that we brought here, and things to think about before you show up. I want to give a huge thank you to Spencer Cox from Speed Sport Tuning. As always, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.